OCN, Word of God to the World. Welcome to Healthy Living in OCN Network. My name is Dr. Victor Oranusi. I'm a medical doctor and also a pastor at All Nation Living Fountains Church and World Outreach Center in Los Angeles, California. In this program, we discuss issues that pertain to our health, things that a child of God must apply in their life to prosper in health, and in every area of their life. When we talk about health, we're not just talking about physical health. We're talking about health in every area. Healthy living, healthy family life, healthy relationship, healthy finances in every area. Basically, we talked about the blessings of God and how to partake of that blessing as a child of God. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that we need in life, we have it in Jesus Christ. We have to apply our heart to be able to position ourselves, to be able to partake so that we can enjoy the abundant life that we have in Jesus Christ. And that includes your healthy, your living a healthy life, healthy lifestyle, a life that glorifies God. That the light of God will shine through you, that people will see you and know that indeed, acknowledge you as a child of God. So these are the things that we discuss in this program. Before we continue, I would like us to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We exalt the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for this privilege to present to your people issues that will allow them to prosper in health, in sound mind, in a peaceful spirit, to live an abundant life that glorifies you. Father, thank you, Father, that this message will impact the life of all that are here. And Father, I pray that anyone who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that through this program, they will have a life-changing encounter with Christ. Father, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, my name is Dr. Victor Ranasi. Welcome to Healthy Living in OCN Network. As we begin today's program, and today's program, again, we will title it, Relying on God's Wisdom for a Healthy Christian Life. Relying on God's Wisdom for a Healthy Christian Life. One thing that God has promised his people. One thing that God promised every believer. It's a guarantee that everything that represents the cost of the law has been abolished by Jesus Christ. Because Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 reminds us that Christ has redeemed us from the cost of the law. Being made a cost for us. That the blessing of Abraham shall come to the Gentiles. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, it reminds us that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him 
that has called us to glory and virtue. He has given us everything that you need to live a healthy life, an abundant life, and he has abolished everything that presents the cause of the law. The issue is how do you ensure that you, or how do you position yourself to partake of all that God has given to you? Jesus reminds us in John 10.10 10, that the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Who is the thief? The devil, Satan, and his forces, all the demonic forces. Jesus described him as the thief. Comes to kill, to steal, to destroy, but Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. That abundant life, we want to partake of it. And Jesus said that he's knocking on the door. Whoever opened the door, he will come in to sup with him. So today we're going to use, um, talk about application of wisdom to have a healthy Christian life. And that healthy Christian life pertains to your physical health, pertains to your family life, pertains to financial issues in every area. You want to prosper. You want to be a, live an abundant life that glorifies God. You want to partake of all that God has given to us. I want us to turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to read verses 5 to 10. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 10, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It shall be held to thy navel. It shall be held to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Verse 9, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thy increase. So shall thy bounds be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst on out with new wine. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not on your own understanding. Here, the word of God is reminding us to basically surrender totally to God. Because when he talks about trust the Lord with all thy heart, he's talking about just total surrender. Don't lean on what you know, but lean on what God knows and says in his word. And when you lean on what God says in his word, you are focusing on him. You're focusing on what he says and who he is and who he has called you to be. You are trusting totally in him. So that his word and promises will come to pass in your own life. And that pertains to your health, your well-being, everything that pertains to you as a child of God. We want to be walk in divine health. We want to Enjoy our life abundantly, which is the promise of God. So we want to make sure that we close the door to the enemy in every area. Because the enemy is always looking, looking for opportunity to come in, looking for opportunity to creep in. But that's where wisdom is important in the life of a child of God. The word of God says, get wisdom, get understanding. Cherish it, buy it. It's better than rubies. So it's better than every precious stone. Because when you as a child of God is applying your heart unto wisdom, you will close the door to the enemy in many areas. Because when you are walking, being wise in your own eyes, you will negate the word of God and you open the door to the enemy. And it's important for us to know that Christianity 
being a child of God, somebody that has committed to Jesus Christ, it means that you are relying on God's word. You, are tr you believe that Jesus came, he died for your sins, he rose again to justify you. He has redeemed you from the curse of the law. He has destroyed the work of the devil. And you are, you are committing your life to follow him. You are following him. Because a true Christian life will simply reflect the word of God as in a mirror. So you compare your lifestyle, your attitude to what the word of God says, not to what anybody else says. People will come to you to say something or gossip. You reflect again, look at the word of God. What does the word of God say? Things that I should not entertain or allow. Do not give room to the devil. That is why it's important that we as believers begin to ask God for wisdom. What are the advantages of having that wisdom? in our life that will allow you to partake of all that God has given to you that pertains to life and godliness. To ensure that you enjoy life, abundant life that God has given to you. That abundant life applies to your physical health. It applies to your finances, to your relationship in a family, to the life a peaceful life, a life of joy and peace that glorifies God, a life that people will envy. They will say that indeed, look at what God is doing in their life. So wisdom will cause you to, number one, acknowledge God in all your ways. It's important for us. It means basically to line up in God's ways in everything we do in this life. As we follow his ways, we will never stumble. In that Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Which means, every door to the enemy you must shut off. Because wisdom, a child of God that is working in wisdom will know that the word of God is true and faithful. Which means, number one, you will forgive because God has, has forgiven you and commanded you to forgive. You must not be a bitterness because bitterness looks, leads to anger and then you find yourself gossiping and talking and trashing other people. It leads to hatred. The book of Second John Sorry, 1 John chapter 2. It reminds us that anybody that hates his brother is still walking in darkness. So when you are walking in darkness, what are you doing? You are giving weight room to the devil because darkness cannot cast away darkness. You're a child of God, but you choose to walk in darkness. Wisdom of God will cause you to walk in in the light of the gospel. But when you lack that wisdom, you will negate what the word of God says. Because God himself is love. He's the God of mercy. He has forgiven your sins. What make us the, give a, that gave us the right to be called a child of God is because of the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. The gospel has abolished debt. Debt is the debt from sin. The sentence of debt that is on any, everyone that do not believe. But the gospel has abolished debt and brought to light life and immortality. So how can you go back to darkness when you have been pulled away from the power of darkness? Because he said that Christ has redeemed from the power of darkness. God has redeemed us from the power of darkness, and translated all this to the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. That the kingdom of Jesus Christ is the kingdom of the light. 
So when you are walking in hatred and bitterness, you are not walking in wisdom. Because the Bible says in that's 1 John chapter 2, that you are still walking in darkness. And because you are walking in darkness, you are opening yourself for the enemy to attack you. You are opening the door for the enemy to attack you. But we want to shut up the door to the enemy in its fullest. Any door that any legal right that the enemy wants to use to come in to attack your life, to your health, we want to shut up that door. That is why in 1 John chapter 1, it says, if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you have fellowship, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. You see, Satan comes to point accusing finger at a believer. Anytime the people of God gather, Satan comes, looking for who to attack, looking for who he has, has a legal right to attack. Anybody that is exposed, that is not covered. That that's why you say when you walk in the light, as it is in the light, you have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses you. The blood of Jesus wipes away, so Satan cannot have any legal right over you. Because the blood of Jesus continues to cleanse you, continues to maintain your right standing with God. Satan is looking for people that will not, do not have right standing with God so that he can have opportunity to, to attack them. But the blood of Jesus is a shield. So when you are walking in the light, as it is in the light, you know the blood of Jesus cleanses you. That's your defense. Because you overcome by the words of your testimony and by the blood of Jesus Christ. So you can see the importance of doing things God's own way. God is love. He's the God that has redeemed us, forgave our sins. Jesus died, they paid a great penalty. He says, for the joy that is ahead of him, the joy that is before him, he despised the shame. He despised the cross. All the shame that was given to him, he despised them so that you and I can be redeemed. Because he was looking to uh, the joy of our salvation, the salvation of mankind, the restoration of mankind to God, the reconciliation of mankind to God, the Father. The redemption from the power of darkness, from the power of the Satan. He endured, he decided to endure the cross. It was a painful death. He despised the shame. He ignored the shame. Say it's nothing because he knows where he was walking to. And so shall it be for us. We know the promises of God for us. We know that God desires the best for his people. We want to live a healthy Christian life. We want to live a life of joy, of life of purpose, a life that glorifies God. So we choose by the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us to walk in that path that he has called us. Because as we do so, we will not stumble. He says, in all your ways acknowledge him. So don't walk in, don't lean on your own understanding. But we lean on the understanding that he has given to us in his word, by his word. So we do all things to the glory of God. Remember that we are nothing without him. So don't try to be wise in your own eyes. You cannot be smarter than your creator. He has forgiven us. You have to forgive. If you are walking in bitterness and hatred, you are only giving room to the devil. But you don't want the devil to swallow you up. 
So you must, wisdom will cause you to acknowledge God in all your ways. That's the first thing that I talked about. Number two, wisdom will cause you not to despise God's ways or words. God's ways are the part of life. You want to live an abundant life. You want to live a joyful life. You want to live a healthy life. You must not despise the word of God or push it aside that it doesn't worth anything. That is why, again, in going to that Proverbs chapter 3, here, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Depart from evil. When we talk about departing from evil, people, you may just think, oh, I, I don't do these big things. But you work in hatred. You are bitter. You hate your brother, even your brother in the church. You disdain people. Or you say that I don't, um, I don't commit fornication or adultery. Yes, you don't. But remember when you hate your brother, you already committed murder. It's important for us to remember that so that we as believers can be able to ward up the hands of the enemy. Any door that you have for the enemy to penetrate your life, to steal the blessing and the promises of God in your life, you want to shut it off. So wisdom will cause you not to despise the word of God. God's ways are the part of life. Because that wisdom, as you walk in that wisdom, it shall be held to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. It doesn't matter what you think. The Bible says in Psalm 145, verse 17, it says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. So the word of God is settled forever. You cannot be wiser than the word of God. Whatever he says for you to do, do it. Shut off every other voice, every other noise. It doesn't matter one's opinion or what the politicians say or what people your neighbor says. If it's contrary to God's word, shut it off. The challenge we have as believers, we know the word of God, but we negate, we just ignore it. Or you don't think that it applies to you. It applies to those people, the unbelievers. No, it applies to you. Because that's the part of life for you to enjoy all the, and partake of all the promises of God, especially when it pertains to your health. The word of God has to be a defense. In that Psalm 91 that many of us read and we use it to pray. See, your truth shall be my shield and buckler. What is the truth? The word of God. The Bible specifically said that the, your word is truth. So the word of God is truth. The word of God is your defense and your shield. So if you are not walking in that path, there's no private revelation. Truth is truth. When God says, don't for forgive, you must forgive. Honor. You must honor. You are putting up a defense against the enemy because the word of God is your shield and buckler. That's truth, the truth of God's word. It's your shield and buckler. It defends you. That's part of the shield of the enemy, uh, uh, part of the shield that you have against the enemy so that it cannot have its way in your life. In Hosea chapter 14, verse 9, it says, Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. 
For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. If you're a child of God, you are the just of the Lord. You have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have right standing with God. And the just shall walk in them. Who is wise? Are you wise? Are you, you will understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. So you need the wisdom of God. If you are truly wise, you will understand the truth of God's word. And you will walk in them. So that you cannot give room to the devil. You are the just, so you shall walk in the walk in the word of God, in the light of the gospel. But he said, but the transgressor shall fall therein. People that are obstinate, people that are unbelievers, or people that just choose to walk in rebellion. Say they shall fall. But you don't want to fall because God has not called you to fall. God has not called you to shame as a child of God. God has called you to prosper in health, in sound mind, in a peaceful spirit. The final passage that I like to read, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, St. Paul writing to the people of Corinthians from 21 to 25, he says, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. He pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jew a stumbling block. And unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. There is so much in this passage that we will revisit in our next program. But remember... You must walk in wisdom. Wisdom of God will allow you to have a fruitful, to have a healthy Christian life. And that life is, is based on the promises of God, the word of God, the promises that God has given to you as a believer. It is your portion. You want to partake of it. You want to maximize it. So, one of number one thing for you to be able to maximize is number one, acknowledge God in all your ways. We talked about that. And number two, we will revisit that. Do, do not despise God's ways or his words. God's ways are the path of life. We will continue in this program next time. Remember, Jesus loves you. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept him today. He loves you. He cares for you. I will pray with me. Just repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I acknowledge Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, as my Lord and Savior. I believe that he died for my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Renew my mind. Give me a new heart. Strengthen me to walk with you. To walk in that light of the gospel that you have called me. I acknowledge you today. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for making me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Remember, tune in to OCN Network. Send your gift to continue to allow the Word of God to prosper. 
remain abundantly blessed. I look forward to seeing you in healthy living. Remain blessed. Again, my name is Dr. Victor Orano, CA pastor and also a physician. Remain blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.